the juicy crunch of the fried chicken, the satisfying taste of a crisp waffle fry dipped in sauce, the refreshing fizz of soda, and the feeling of wet cardboard in my mouth. <laughs> that was the reality I faced when my favorite fast food joint swapped its plastic straws for a sustainable paper alternative. If this sounds familiar to you, that's because paper straws are one of the most hated, least useful, sustainable solutions out there. A quick Google search reveals what seems to be the general consensus. And I agree. <laughs> paper straws are the worst. Paper straws are ruining my life. And paper straws are the most useless item ever created. Put simply, paper straws are an imperfect solution to a greater evil, single-use plastic. We already see this plastic everywhere, in our coffee shops, in our landfills, and in our oceans. But what if I told you that there's a material that fixes all the problems of both paper and plastic, a material both sustainable and sturdy? That material is polylactic acid, or PLA for short, a biodegradable bioplastic made from plants. While regular plastic is derived from oil and gas, PLA is made from sugarcane and corn. And many believe it's the wonder material we've all been waiting for. But don't just take my word for it. Let's hear about some PLA products from the companies themselves. One company advertises, this cup holds drinks without leaking. Oh, no way. <laughs> Rocks its environmental attributes and is always the life of the party. Best of all, when it's time to go home, this cup is certified compostable and returns to the soil until your next bash. Interesting description for a cup. Or check out these cups for those with thirst and a dream for a greener world. Even this small cup makes a big environmental statement. Notice anything? If it seems like PLA is too good to be true, that's because it is. These ads are a classic example of greenwashing. Greenwashing is advertising used to deceive the public that a product is environmentally friendly. These days, the average consumer, people like you and I, are becoming more and more environmentally conscious. We've seen the impacts of fossil fuels and single-use plastics, and we're more inclined to buy products that we believe are better for the Earth. A 2021 study by PwC found that 66% of consumers were willing to pay more for products that are sustainably sourced. By greenwashing their products, companies gain all the positives of sustainable practices without taking the necessary steps to implement them. So while the marketing for those cups might say that they're the life of the party, the missing detail is that PLA items are industrially compostable only. Let me explain. When most people think of composting, what comes to mind is home composting, a bucket of food scraps and leaves in your backyard. On the other hand, industrial composting means temperatures of 140 degrees Fahrenheit, monitored moisture content, and processing through a $100,000 windrow turner. So even if you're composting in Death Valley at the record temperature, you're still not hot enough. Industrial composting conditions are virtually impossible to attain in any landfill. So when you throw your PLA cup in the trash, it will still take hundreds of years to degrade, no faster than oil-based plastics. But even if you do know the difference between home and industrial composting, these highly specialized facilities are only available at select locations across the country. Your community could be miles away from the nearest industrial composting site. And that's only if you're part of the 27% of America with access to any sort of composting service. Clearly, PLA is not the best solution to replace paper straws. But rather than accept defeat 
at the hands of a piece of soggy paper, I decided to do the sensible thing and invent a new material, a new kind of biodegradable plastic. Now, if you asked me at the time, my senior year of high school, what it took to invent a new material, I would have told you that I have no idea. I'd only taken one required year of high school chemistry, and I had zero lab or chemicals experience. But regardless, for a full semester of senior year, I stayed after school in the lab, curiously trying new formulas and recipes, tinkering with different mixtures of starch and acid to create the perfect biodegradable plastic. And at the end of the semester, the fruit of my labor was a total failure. <laughs> it was solid and green, sure, but a lot closer to jello than plastic, and it had the strength of a melted gummy bear. For the time being, I'd given up on creating a biodegradable plastic. But when I came to UT, PLA made an abrupt resurgence into my life through the dining halls. Out of our three dining halls, one of them doesn't have dishwashing facilities to support reusable dishware like glass cups or ceramic plates. Instead, this dining hall uses single-use, disposable PLA for all of its serviceware. I knew from my plastic research experience that PLA wasn't any better than regular plastic if it didn't make it to an industrial composter. This wouldn't be a problem if our dining hall had industrial composting bins. However, their partition bins only have holes for landfill, recycling, and landfill again. When I realized that our dining hall was not actually composting our compostable plastic, my reaction was a lot like the picture above. <laughs> but rather than accept it as a fact of life, I decided to get to the bottom of it. So I googled sustainability and UT housing and dining and cold emailed every email address I could find. Now, cold emailing can be daunting, but I actually have a super secret technique that I use for a guaranteed response. For all you students in the audience, Listen up, here are the magic words. I am a student doing research. <laughs> and it works wonders. Here are the results. OK, I did receive a lot of undeliverable emails, and I'll admit, the response rate isn't 100%. But before you lose faith in my method, I did receive some replies. And one of them was from the head of sustainability at UT Housing and Dining. I learned that even though we don't compost our PLA, it's not because Housing and Dining doesn't care about the environment. A few years ago, we used to send our food waste to be composted. However, the high contamination rates of our bins led to hefty fines. Every time a student put a ketchup packet or a popsicle wrapper in the compost, the university received a fine. Eventually, the fines piled up, and the program was discontinued. So every day, UT Austin students are using PLA cups, utensils, and straws, thinking that they will turn into dirt, but instead will live in our landfills for hundreds of years to come. Here's a tower of PLA cups I collected over two weeks of eating exclusively at the dining hall. I want each of you to imagine holding your own stack of cups. Multiply this by the 1,000 people sitting in this auditorium, and we get 42,000 cups, or the amount of PLA we dispose of in three days on this campus. I got sick and tired of seeing our PLA-filled trash cans, and I knew there had to be a solution combining my strengths with our problem. I may not be the best at chemistry, but I am good at robotics. And I realized I could use my electrical engineering skills to create an industrial composting robot on a dining hall scale. But to make this robot, I had to do some research. So I cold called the big company that sells all the PLA to UT, told them I was a student doing research, <laughs> and that I was trying to figure out the best way to compost their PLA. When I asked if I could speak with the scientist, 
they told me that they don't have any scientists. <laughs> they simply buy the PLA and mold the products. Instead, they recommended I reach out to my local industrial composting facility to figure out what they were doing with the PLA. So guess what I did? I decided to visit Texas Disposal Systems, the closest industrial composting facility to UT, to figure out how they did it. So I cold emailed them, told them I was a student doing research, and they offered me a tour. Because I'm a freshman and I don't have a car, I had to skateboard 40 minutes down the highway <laughs> to TDS. That's right. I wanted to visit the trash dump so bad that I skipped class and skated 40 minutes down the highway to get there, where they were both impressed at my interest in their operation and that I made it there in one piece. <laughs> Using what I learned at TDS about industrial composting, I designed the C1, a small-scale industrial composter built to deal with dining waste. By tumbling and heating the food waste, the C1 dramatically reduces the composting time from months to days and integrated temperature and moisture sensors help replicate those rigorous 140-degree conditions needed to compost PLA. I spent the past semester at the UT Makerspace designing, drilling, and laser cutting my trash can-sized prototype for the C1. And I'm currently testing it at dining halls on campus, combining food waste, PLA, and some cool engineering to create compost. While the full-size C1 will look a lot more like a cement truck, eventually we'll be able to compost every PLA cup, utensil, and straw that goes through UT Dining. However, there's still more to be done. UT Austin is just one of the many universities, businesses, and restaurants that are switching to PLA. Across the country, PLA is sold under the guise of being compostable, and often, Greenwashing makes a sale. The most powerful weapon we have against greenwashing is recognition. Recognizing when climate claims are too good to be true. Doing our own research and making an informed decision. Be wary of PLA buzzwords like compostable, made from plants, or biodegradable. They don't tell the whole truth. To be sure if an item is made from PLA, look on the bottom for the resin identification code this little arrow symbol with a seven in it. But that begs the question, when you've identified PLA, how do you dispose of it? Despite looking like plastic, PLA isn't recyclable, so don't put it in the blue bin. And if you're part of the 73% of America without access to composting services, the next best thing to do is throw it away. But beyond disposal, I encourage you to use your influence as a sustainable consumer to push for change. Vote with your wallet for companies making real sustainability efforts. And if you're up for it, take up the challenge of making change in your own community. You don't have to invent a new material or engineer a robotic composter, but actions as small as choosing reusable over disposable, pushing to add an industrial composting bin to your workplace, or simply educating others on the myth of compostable plastic can all make meaningful impacts on our plastic pollution problem. If we all work together, we can build a future where we don't need paper straws to make a difference. Thank you. <laughs>